Well, hello, Crime Stoppers. Shithole. They're saying shithole on TV. I win. <laughs> they're, they're literally saying shithole on TV. Anyway, let's see here. Oh, so much to talk about again. Uh, I don't, I'll try and keep this as brief as possible. Uh, the hour-long ones are ridiculous. But anyway, um, the point being, we've got guys... Okay, so first, let's go with Sessions. Let's start with Sessions. I've made a couple of videos about weed. But um, Jeff Sessions, who is beholden to pharmaceutical companies and uh, private prison programs and private prison people that have funded his campaigns going back decades, uh, he clean when you get down to it. I mean, you know, he's basically clean, but he's dirty in a clean kind of way because those private prisons for profit and because pharmaceutical companies and so forth. But I mean, you know, he's up and up and he's a pretty much a bright stand-up guy. You take a look at his record in Alabama and, uh, you know, attorney, as attorney general, Stealth Jeff, as they called him. Uh, fearless, also. I mean, fuck it. He didn't care who you were. Um, now, uh, he's got these guys, uh, we've got this weed revolution going on and people figuring out that it's not just a myth. Um, there's a video, is, I think I'll see if I can find it on Fox News, where they actually talk about a couple of pot stocks and so on, and they totally deride pot and weed, like, oh, it's just, you know, you'll be non-motivated to win seven Olympic medals. Uh, gold, by the way. Um, you know, they totally came after Phelps for that. Uh, all, everything that is a myth about pot, uh, that it could give you lung cancer, actually it cleans out your lungs and makes it so that you uh, increase your lung capacity. I mean, just complete and utter bullshit. I'll uh, try and put that link down there. Um, but anyway, the idea is that, uh, you know, they've got this weed revolution going on, and Jeff got to help us out and slow this thing down or stop it. Now, understand, every market is controlled, right? Every market is rigged. When I figured out that they could rig the bond market and the Forex, right, the, the, the currency exchanges and the bond markets, they're rigged. We know they're rigged. Because uh, they can print as much money as they want. Okay, you, you think they can't rig a, a, a weed <laughs> revolution uh, so that they can uh, place their bets? Uh, have uh, Jeff, I mean, because things were getting out of control. They were starting to take off. I mean, stocks were taking off and so forth. And then Jeff flaps his lip. Second year in a row, by the way. This is the second time it's happened. This time, however, uh, they know the polls. Believe me, they, 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 they uh, have a pulse on what's going on. And they see that 94%. 94%, that's like damn near everybody in the country. That's crazy. That's a crazy number um, of people when asked if people that are taking medical marijuana should be left alone in the states where they've made it legal for them to have uh, medical marijuana, 94% say yes, leave those people alone, right? Um, I mean, like it's overwhelming numbers. Like you want to you wanna get unpopular quick, I'll tell you what, try to pull some reefer magnets. And, and this is the other thing, that people are not... Uh, fooled like they were anymore. They're educated. Stoners are not like just, you know, the, the dumbasses that people try to make them out to be. There are actually quite a few of them. Uh, people like, uh, dare I say it, uh, I've smoked weed with this guy before. Uh, what's his name? Uh, everybody would know. John McAfee. That's it. That guy. Okay. Um, and others uh, from uh, CEOs of companies, so forth. John McAfee definitely if you ever watch this, you had the better stories <laughs> by far. Oh, my God. Uh, but I had the better weed. Anyway, the idea is, uh, and we were in California, it was legal, 100% what we were doing. Um, anyway, the idea is that uh, you're not stopping this thing, and they know it. They, they understand the polls. They've looked at the numbers. And uh, so what does Jeff Sessions do? He makes everybody happy is what he does. Uh, the guys that are he's beholden to from the prison system and from the uh, pharmaceutical companies and others that are telling him to put the brakes on and you better enforce these weed laws. We made these weed laws. I mean, who else but satanic pedophiles would at the federal level would, I mean, and look at how they made it. They had to lie, 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 lie uh, and go around the Constitution and just, I mean, to put the prohibition on anything. They had, they, I mean, you know, when they tried to uh, put a prohibition on alcohol, they had to amend the Constitution. Somehow they managed to get a prohibition on weed and hemp. Oh, my God. Uh, that's coming down. It's all, people are educated. They understand that the hemp can be used for a thousand and one things. 
uh, that all threaten the titans of industry. And like I said, this uh, uh, these people that are thinking that Trump is the lesser of two evils, no, he's still evil, right? He's still part of the Kazarian Mafia, or the Kazarian Mafia, there's a mouthful. Um, he's, he's not a good guy. There will not be free energy. They will still be using oil. They uh, don't want to be using hemp in this country. Look at all the other, I mean, around the world, right? This nation is so enslaved, it's ridiculous. So uh, we had faction A that wanted total fucking evil slavery, and then we have faction B that's going to give us slavery light. So cut it the fuck out with this, you know, Trump our savior thing and, you know, making America great again. Are you fucking kidding me? Um, we have a long since had the technology that nobody on this planet needs to work. We should all be fed. But no, <laughs> they're not having that. Right for you to be able to, uh, for your creativity to blossom, and for you to be able to ascend and just you know read scripture and and do what the hell you want with your life. No, no, no. They want you working, and they're not gonna. You, right? You, you. They, they want you working, uh, but we have long since had the technology where we don't have to do that anymore. Long since it's been decades now. Um, I mean, fifties, forties. We've had the technology. If we would just quit spending all this money on war, we could have utopian. Uh, clean water, uh, beautiful forests, and and uh, you know wildlife protected. But no, 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 none of that. Um, but the point being is these guys are clever as hell when it comes to uh, using uh, strategy. So Jeff Sessions comes out against pot, makes all his people happy, but that causes the backlash that they know is going to happen, which forces our Congress. To uh, I mean, they're they're aware of the concept of blowback. Unlike the other fuckwits that have been uh, in office for quite a while uh, or in power for quite a while, um, who who seem to not understand the concept of blowback. These guys, uh, Ron Paul explained it to you. Um, these guys understand the concept of blowback, and they know how to use blowback in their favor. Take the shithole comment about Haiti, right? Ho, oh, the blowback. But guess what? The blowback is blowing back against them because everybody that, I mean, when the Clintons came out and Chelsea came out and, and anybody that came out defending that or going after Trump, right? Really, so you're going to go after him for saying uh, stuff like, oh, it's a shithole. And it is a fucking shithole and you know it. Um, why is it a shithole? Because uh, the Clinton Foundation stole hundreds of, they built six fucking houses down there with hundreds and hundreds of millions into the billions of dollars and nobody seems to know where those billions of dollars went. And then Bill Clinton just puts a tweet out that says something like, you know, I did not have uh, sex with that country's money. Uh, I mean, it was just insane that, that these people would even talk. We have the fucking WikiLeaks of them discussing. And, and he's right. Uh, the, in the tweet, he said funds, right? There are never any funds, uh, right? But in the WikiLeak and in the emails, they said they called it resources, Resor the resources down there. Um, those resources were hundreds of millions of dollars in relief funds uh, that just vaporized into the Clinton Foundation. Uh, it's insane. And now people are talking about it. They have to talk about it. Uh, I mean, this guy is a stable genius. This guy is beyond... I mean, it's incredible what this guy gets away. Are you kidding me? You think that a shitstorm wasn't a uh, rehearsed statement right they were probably talking about it in private in uh in a way that it was like okay uh you know what people would freak out if they heard you say that let's let them hear you say that so they get a private conversation the private conversation gets leaked and now everybody's talking about haiti and the shithole countries that we have shithole right it's, I mean, it's just insanity that uh, Libya, slaves, they're selling fucking slaves in Libya and they're doing organ harvesting there. Direct result of the meddling of uh, Secretary of State Hillary Rodham Clinton and Barack Obama, right? Direct result. Uh, that's a shithole country right now. Absolutely, it's a shithole country. Our fault. Uh, Haiti, another shithole country. Uh, that's absolutely a shithole. Look, I mean, oh my God, some of the photographs down there, the squalor that these people are living in, and hundreds of millions of dollars in relief funds went down there. And they're still living in squalor. And the fucking Clintons have the, have, have the gall, have the nerve to open their fucking mouths. Right? 
Uh, nothing happens in politics except it was planned that way. I am certain, and I mean certain, that uh, this was, what is it, uh, one of the fires that they were going to set to flush them out, right? So they get the, the fire they set, the firestorm is, uh, sh you know, saying shithole, and now, it's, I mean, like I said, win for us, because they're now saying shithole with uncensored, just like they said nigger during the, uh, uh, what do you call, the uh, OJ trials to fan the flames. Uh, now, I mean, right? I mean, this is all theater. It's theater. It's, it's Merca, season two. Uh, I mean, in this episode, uh, the president uh, swears and uh, the reaction to that and then the reaction to that. Now, here's another thing. And I uh, highly recommend this anyway about whatever it is. But uh, in this case, it's in regard to marijuana. Uh, cannabis. Uh, cannabis cures. Marijuana is medicine. It is no longer a myth. We've had another year of month after month in certain forums on the internet that I'm in of people uh, sh sharing their success stories with uh, curing cancer using cannabis. Um, and it turns out there is a million and one ways to get rid of many cancers. Uh, just re I mean, everybody that uh, has cancer is acidic figure out how to raise your body's pH and uh, cancer cannot live in a in a high pH environment right uh, simple I mean you can I mean so I mean people are drinking high pH water but real high pH water people are using baking soda to raise their pH uh, there are you know juices that you can drink uh, extracts that you can drink that will raise your uh, wheatgrass etc I mean juice diets and so forth really do work what do you know uh, and then it turns out cannabis, and then it turns out vitamin C in your IV. Uh, people have started to figure out uh, that we're not, uh, it's not necessary to be beholden to the pharmaceutical companies. Uh, and they, they see that writing on the wall also. There is no stopping this cannabis revolution, and consciousness is rising. What they're telling you is that it's going to make us docile and more accepting and willing to take the shithole conditions that they're going to foist upon us. Uh, but I think that that is exactly not what's going to happen. What's going to happen is uh, those that partake in the cannabis are going to see what could be and achieve that instead. Because what could be right now is free energy devices, right? There are st there's stuff floating around the internet right now talking about 100 mile and uh, you know carburetors that can get 100 miles per hour because they're vapor carbs. They use vapor instead of aspiration, which is ridiculous. The word is getting out. Uh, my grand uncles, grand uncles with the big huge cars from the 19 early uh, 1950s and late 1940s came home after the war. Uh, they were mechanics. They had been exposed to some interesting German stuff. They came home and uh, built a vapor carb. And uh, I can't remember whether it was either Dodge or Chrysler, one of those two. And they thought that the family was going to be rich. Right? My grandmother showed me these plans. And where they went, I don't know. Because they were in a garage somewhere in Silvis, Illinois. And I, she died, and I don't know what happened to anything. Anyway, um, but I have seen them with my own eyes, damn it. Uh, and it was just, you know, making vapor. Make it, turning the gasoline into vapor before it put in, put it, you put it into the carburetor. And those cars would get 100 miles to a gallon or more. And they were sure that they were going to be rich. Nope. Bought that patent up, buried it. That's a story out of my family. Guess what? There are many other families with similar stories. Our family had a good time because nobody got killed. Right? <laughs> nobody died. Uh, in other families, not the case. The guys, uh, try, you know, try to push the issue. Got, got uh, suicided or poisoned or whatever I mean Stanley Meyer with his water thing that's not that's a whole other animal that's not even just I mean that's using the fuel that they give us There's a shit fuel that uh, you know we got to drill out of the ground when we could be using uh, you know free the free energy devices are for real um, cold fusion right low energy nuclear reactions are real uh, in fact even when they were deriding them they were still getting response 20% of the time the other 80% was because they were using platinum that wasn't pure enough. Uh, once they got pure platinum, it's like 90% uh, reaction rate. Almost every time you can duplicate this in whatever laboratory. More energy out than you put in. Because 
Tesla told you, study the unseen forces. All right, never mind that. How about magnets? Uh, magnets put in a certain array will create spin. Once you get it spinning, it continues to spin. Physics says this is impossible because of inertia, but you forget that uh, magnetic force is greater than gravitational force by far. Look, there's magnets that are beating the <laughs> force of gravity, and look how thin they are. Um, it's just ridiculous. But they, I mean, they, they just keep, they lie about the mathematics, they lie about the physics, they lie about, they just lie. And now they're getting caught in their lies. And now they're getting caught in their lies with this thing called WikiLeaks. So now when the Clintons try to lie about, I mean, that's just one thing. Haiti is just one problem they have. Uh, the Clintons have so many problems now, and I mean, I think they got three different investigations, FBI, that are going to be real investigations. Uh, there seems to, and that's another thing I wanted to talk about. It was uh, Chappaqua, not Arkansas. I thought it was Arkansas. It was Chappaqua, where they had the little fire. And uh, that just happened to be on Seth Rich's birthday, and uh, they've come straight out now, basically, and said they won 87, uh, right? 86 is kick out, 87 is kill. So they won 87... Uh, uh, Seth Rich, and then on the anniversary of his birthday, and it was every Watson Schultz apparently who made the, who called for the hit, but with the full knowledge and I mean all the other guys are complicit, uh, according to most laws. Uh, they knew about the, uh, the murder. Uh, they knew there was going to be a hit, and they did nothing to stop it. So, anyway, uh, on his birthday, there's a fire at uh, the anniversary of his birthday. There's a fire at the Clintons' place in Chappaqua up in New York. Well, there's multiple theories swirling around this. One, uh, they found out that they were under investigation, and of course they're getting rid of evidence, which uh, they're famous for. I mean, they've done it in plain view. I mean, there's no question that they're pounding blackberries and bleaching uh, hard drives, and I mean, you know, setting fire to stuff is no not any stretch of the imagination beyond. But, uh, because it's Seth Rich's, Rich's birthday, the anniversary of Seth Rich's birthday, Perhaps it was a warning. Perhaps it was, you're not even safe in your own house. Because, I mean, they got Secret Service like crazy. Um, I don't know. Don't know. I know the head of the Secret Service is a Marine. Um, but I also know that whether they're protecting demons or angels, they take their job seriously, and the protection is the same. Uh, you know, because their job is not to make a judgment call. Their job is to do their job. So, um, unfortunately, because if they do their damn job uh, on judgment, um, Clintons would already be arrested. Because I know these guys uh, know, uh, right? They know. Um, everything that you've seen on the YouTube about, uh, you know, satanic pedophiles and the rituals and so forth, how could those guys not know? How could they be exposed to this shit for decades and just be, I mean, if they don't know, then they're so fucking ignorant that they shouldn't be guarding them. I mean, they're incompetent. I mean, that's ignorance bordering on incompetence. There's no fucking way. A lot of these marshals, a lot of these sheriffs, a lot, I mean, going from state, you know, federal, local, state, federal, all of it, they know. They absolutely know. Uh, and they turn a blind eye because uh, for a lot of reasons. Uh, some of them need to confess, and they'll probably be forgiven, especially if they've been threatened, or because in some of those places, you just keep your mouth shut, and uh, maybe you don't take part in it, and so on, but you just keep your mouth shut, and you and you don't get killed, and your family doesn't get killed, and nobody gets killed, because these people will kill. These are people that uh, rape babies. These are people that cut organs out of children and suck the juice, right? Adrenochrome. Look it up. These people are so heinous, you can't wrap your minds around how heinous these people are. So to kill uh, some stray cop that knows too much is no big deal to them. To kill uh, a sheriff or a mayor or a senator is no big deal to them. They got away with killing a fucking president. They have no fear of us whatsoever. None. Not any. Don't even fool yourselves. Okay. So the idea is, uh, the one thing we have is quantity. And quantity has a quality all its own, according to a certain Russian general. Now, we outnumber them in, in, in mass. And what they were going to do was get rid of us. So there wasn't so many humans on the planet. Because 
we're waking up to the fact that there's a whole lot more of us than there are of them. And there are many, many now, many who have gone over and served and fought in these fucking bullshit wars, who have come back, woke up, and uh, basically they're saying, you guys don't fucking do your jobs, and we are going to do them for you. Right? Which is why they wanted to keep their, their hands... Uh, their hands off guns, right? They tried, the veterans that come home, they had all these crazy laws that, you know, these guys that are absolutely proficient with these weapons uh, aren't allowed to have these weapons. Are you fucking kidding me? Why would that be? Are they afraid of their own men? Are they afraid of their own citizens? Hmm. The idea is there are many, many, many more of us. And they're starting to hear the uh, rumblings of the populace, right? I have a uh, collection. It's called Women and Guns. And all it is is hot chicks, and not so hot chicks, but usually hot chicks and guns. And you can see a lot of these guys shooting, and some of them, you know, like short clips of videos, chicks just shooting guns. Okay, the Japanese, uh, I can't remember, Yamato, I believe it was, said, we'll never invade the American mainland because there'd be a gun behind every blade of grass. Every fucking country knows this. Our women use guns, our children use guns, our men use guns. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of guns are registered up and down just on the west coast and on the east coast and on the southern coast, <laughs> right? Hundreds of thousands of guns in the hands of civilians, right? What manner of men are these? Cornwall remarked as he stood there defeated by gentlemen soldiers who were basically farmers and peasants who stood up against the greatest army ever in the history of the world. Uh, up until that time, the British Empire was nothing to be trifled with. And uh, citizenry beat them. Now, everybody always talks about, oh, you'll never stand up against the United States military. Quantity has a quality all its own. And further, I do not believe that most of your countrymen, those soldiers that are in the United States military, would, uh, you know, airstrike American cities. I believe those commands would be disobeyed. Call me crazy. Because they might. You never know. But I think overall, what you'll see is a populace that's willing to stand its ground and has gotten to the point where they'll fight and die. No government has ever stood up against that. Ever. Ever, ever. Take the Haitians, for example. Uh, that's one of the reasons why they are one of the more reviled countries on the planet when it comes to the uh, Khazarian Mafia. They stood up against the Khazarian Mafia back in the day. They were slaves. That is the only country on earth where uh, the slave rebellion stood. Now, in other countries like uh, this one and France and even in England and all across Europe and in Africa, all over the place, there are uh, examples. China, <laughs> right? Oh man, throughout the Middle East, and uh, Kazakhstan, uh, the Cossacks, uh, but on and on. Uh, look at your history, and there have been times when the people just said, you know what, fuck you guys. And every time that's ever happened, every single time that's ever happened, when the populace just went, they either got slaughtered to a man, or they didn't fight in the first place, or they won. Over and over again throughout history. Over and over again. Even Romans. All, I mean, just go throughout history and read your damn history. Right? Quantity has a quality all its own. They're hearing the rumblings. They're hearing the fact that we know that these fucking satanic pedophiles are doing the things that they do. And uh, if they don't put it to an end, uh, there are those that are willing to take up arms uh, and put it to an end for them. So uh, we've been continuously told to be patient. There are supposedly 10,000, 10,000, going on like 9,000, like it was like 9,932 or something like that. But I mean, pert near 10,000 sealed indictments. Uh, we've had shit happening at airports where they actually turned planes around. Uh, shut airports down. I mean, all kinds of stuff where they, it looks like people are trying to flee the country. If you look closer, it looks like, right? And then uh, you had Q saying, you think you're just going to get on a plane and leave? Think again. And then uh, mention the fact that there's 44,000 personnel unaccounted for in the United States military. They're accounted for. I promise. They're accounted for. So uh, where are they going to go? And uh, they should be cautious because uh, if they flee the country and they're on foreign soil, 
anything can happen. Now, in the United States, they have actually a better chance of being arrested. And then uh, I think what's going to happen, it's, I've heard it over and over again from source, uh, sources on internet that I semi-trust, and then some personal sources that basically say, uh, no, there's going to be military tribunals. Uh, the left is going to blow their mind at that. They're going to call that, say, you know, they're going to call him uh, a fascist and, you know, this is Hitler and so on and so forth. Um, and the, the, the charges are all, you know, Russian collusion. The Russians made, made all these stories up and planted those emails about raping children. Uh, the treason is obvious when it comes to GPS uh, and he's <laughs> selling the uranium, uh, trumping up a dossier. Uh, I mean, it's just, they've got a lot of problems going on right here. And once, every once in a great while, this happens. The mafia fights with itself. And one faction of the mafia is cleaning up the other faction of the mafia. But the one faction that's getting cleaned up isn't giving up without a fight. Um, the thing that I believe is not happening fast enough to suit most people is the fact that they need to disclose the fact that, yes, these are satanic pedophiles. And they need to disclose the fact that, uh, you know, they're going to be arrested. They've been keeping it secret. And I understand, try to understand, first rule of Fight Club, don't talk about Fight Club. There are plenty of people on, I know, it's awesome. I, I fuck around in forums all the time. These people have no idea what's coming. The Democrats still, with 9,000 something sealed indictments, uh, flights going to Gitmo, all the crazy stuff that's happening in the airports and across, you know, up and, I mean, all our international airports have had some interesting things going on lately. Uh, all kinds of great stories. All the things that are going on right in front of their noses and they still have no idea that these arrests are about to take place. Uh, they, they don't, they, they have opened 10 of these indictments and they're all doozies. <laughs> they're all, every damn one of them is like, holy crap. And uh, rumor has it, they're going all the way back to 9-11. Right? And then all the child trafficking. If you take a look at the, you know, Trump declaring January child, I mean, the look, at the, look at the executive proclamations. And then also, do you recall uh, the Senate and House voting for indefinite detention? Do you recall that? The president has the power to detain anyone indefinitely. Any of us. Fuck any of you all. And then take a look at all the other powers that they gave him, right? Anything. You preppers, you got anything and the president finds out about it, he can redistribute it for you. By law. They gave that office so much power, it's insane. We have uh, easily, anybody that steps in that office that wants to be a dictator can be a dictator, legally, inside the United States Corporation. And uh, they are shitting their pants because he's slowly but surely flexing those muscles. I believe, once again, uh, Jeff is a good man and on the president's side. And that they're playing blowback because they know blowback will cause blowback. And uh, the little blowback from the Clintons was like, <laughs> right? <laughs> the response to that. When they're like, we did not take any of that money. Um, pardon me? We've got the WikiLeaks. Uh, when Jeff Sessions said, we need to make that crazy marijuana. You know, first they're, they're, they start smoking that marijuana and then they're dancing with the Negroes. Uh, and immediately, <laughs> the blowback from that was tremendous. The difference is they know it was coming. Right? They're not, and then, uh, as has been pointed out, watch what uh, our Lady of Grace Donald Trump says uh, now and how he speaks now as compared to how he spoke uh, years ago. I put some of those uh, links. But go back on YouTube, right here on YouTube, and uh, look at older Trump interviews and then compare that to how he speaks now. He is funning you. Just like George Bush, right? Oh, it was just incompetence. It was just complete incompetence that those three buildings not got knocked down by 12 guys with box cutters with two planes. And then the most controlled airspace on planet Earth around our fucking military headquarters, the Pentagon, right? Just gets a plane slams into it. Something slams into it. I mean, there's a comprehensive video on that, uh, the best one I've seen. Uh, it was a YouTube video. I actually downloaded it because I'm sure that they would take it off. 
but she basically showed all the diversions and all the kind of, okay anyway the point being is uh, it's not conspiracy theory uh, Trump knew about that and uh, some of those indictments go back to that time 9-11 here's another fun thing uh, Donald Trump releases all that JFK stuff right uh, here's one story I just made this story up it could be true but basically what happens to most presidents I think this happened to uh, Obama was uh, at some point the uh, agencies CIA, FBI you know some of those guys uh, NSA, a couple of agencies you've never heard of. At some point, uh, when the president starts to get a little uppity, and usually very b near the beginning, they show the other angles and uh, show that the single bullet theory is complete bullshit and that uh, it was a conspiracy and that if you don't fucking play ball, this is what's going to happen to you because we got away with this in broad fucking daylight in Texas. And we just told them it was the most ridiculous story, single bullet theory, uh, and they believed it for 50 years thereabouts um hmm 55 years but anyway the idea is that uh i mean just crazy they they there's still people that right up until uh last year were still going with the single single bullet theory single syrup bully no the single bullet theory um and just unbelievable i mean no knowledge of physics, mathematics, anything. I mean, I've had I had arguments with people that have fucking degrees uh, about the single bullet theory. Anyway, the idea is that uh, they showed him the other angles and showed him how they pulled it off, and he went, you know what? The rest of the country like just played dumb. You know what? I think the rest of the country should see this too. And lo and behold, we get uh, a very clear evidence now that uh, there were multiple shooters more than one shooter and that Oswald was just a stooge and he told you he was a stooge on TV right before they killed him that he was a patsy <sighs> and uh, so uh, usually that works usually that's enough right and, and if uh, that doesn't work then they actually put a bullet in you like they did with Ronald Reagan and uh, man if that guy had been using anything but a 38 uh, George Bush would have succeeded him succeeded him the way uh, they had planned but uh, Ronnie Reagan managed to survive, and then after that, he played ball. Because it was pretty clear that, uh, you know, that's enough to scare you. They got a gun through all your Secret Service and all these other guys, and you thought you were safe, and not. So the idea is that I don't think Trump, and if you take a look at who does Trump's security? Uh, the other thing people have noticed, uh, and this always confuses the peasants, uh, but they all did, uh, body doubles. Uh, all of them. Uh, the first ladies also, but Hillary Clinton, uh, I'm pretty sure, body double. Uh, pretty pretty clear that, 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 that she has body doubles. Uh, many foreign leaders. This is a common thing. Saddam Hussein, he was so good at it, and he had so many because of that homogenous uh, population. There are quite a few guys that look pretty much exactly like him to the point that our guys couldn't take him. They were never sure, right? Because all they would do if uh, they took out the wrong guy was be exposed themselves. They're in hostile. They would never get out of there or expose all of their, their uh, assets that are in the country uh, with taking a hit out on the wrong guy. And then uh, the real... Saddam Hussein swoops in and kills all the guys that were part of the conspiracy. Uh, works out quite nicely. And guess what? This has happened before. I mean, this story is just, it's incredible. It's just an, an amazing, read your history. Um, but the idea is that, uh, and it's hard now because the history is now being um, censored and written uh, in ways, I mean, people are getting censored off of Twitter. What we're going to find out pretty soon uh, is what we need to do is make uh, Twitter and any place that's a quote-unquote public forum, whether paid for or not, is treated like a utility. And uh, utilities and other places uh, in this country, uh, from shore to shore, are subject to the Constitution of the United States. Therefore, you don't get to pull people's posts down for any fucking reason. Right? Profanity? Fuck you. Okay, then, uh, then block out the word in black, if it means so much to you, and leave the rest of the post up. But deleting people's posts and deleting people's accounts and deleting people's work on the internet, not allowed in the United States. That's a free country.
I don't give a fuck what your rules are at your corporation. Simple. I mean, and that applies everywhere. See, but what's happened is with these screaming, whining, ridiculous uh, liberals is that uh, they unfriend you or they'll, you know, uh, block you or they'll delete your post off of their page if they can. If they, it's on your page, they can't, you know, do it. But, uh, you know, they'll try to block your Twitter. They'll complain to Twitter, uh, right? So they don't care if a corporation like Twitter or Google is censoring or Amazon is blocking books or, 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 or. They don't care. They do it themselves. So why shouldn't corporations? That's why we have a fucking constitution is for exactly people like this. The idea was uh, free speech, a country where free speech went and hate speech protected. But the uh, men that founded this country believed in discourse. And the idea, I have exactly the same concept uh, as uh, many of our founding fathers, because it was drilled into me as a young man, is that I may not agree with what you have to say, but I will defend to the death your right to say it. That's an American. Right? These, ah, I don't know, I'm offended. Fuck you. F I mean, seriously, just fuck you. You're offended. So it needs to be taken down. Right? No. Uh, and I'll defend your right to say that you're, off that you're offended in public, but so what? That doesn't mean you get to take down somebody else's post. That doesn't mean you get to silence somebody. And the minute they try to silence you, uh, you know you won. Right? They don't try to silence the liars. Uh, they silence the truth tellers has always been the case. Always. But don't worry. The truth takes care of itself and it needs no defense. Uh, consult your Bible if you need more help with that. Uh, everything that is hidden will be revealed eventually. This is more than, I mean, it's, it was important enough for them to write it down in the Bible, but uh, look around uh, scripture around the world. Uh, the truth will always come to light eventually. Eventually it happens. And uh, they had a handle on it for the longest time. They had the mainstream media absolutely bought and paid for. But then uh, this happened, right? And then there's places like, uh, you know, social media. And now they don't have control of the, of the narrative anymore. And people are waking up to the bullshit, right? You can't say you didn't steal money from Haiti anymore. You can't boldface lie like you used to be able to and have the media even covering for you. A lot of these are Anderson Cooper with tears. And hey, really, is this the kind of pussies you guys want? Your, your daughters to, to look up to, right? Men who cry on TV, right? I mean, oh my God. It's just really over... I mean, and then the fucking son of a bitch doesn't mention the fact that the Clintons raped that country. And the reason why it's a shithole is because none of that aid got to them. Anderson Cooper, uh, I mean, name them. The, the late night talk show hosts, these fucking now have turned into just B-rate comedians. Like, not even A-list anymore. I mean, they're not funny. It's like, you used to be able to watch Late Night and you could laugh. Now it's just, they're, just, they're not funny. They're political. It's political commentary. 24-7 from your news, from your comedians. It's, I mean, you know, Daily Show, yeah, it was supposed to be. But uh, Late Night TV, no. And even The Daily Show, go to, go to fuck back to Africa, motherfucker. I mean, seriously. Getting tired of listening to you talk. Um... And so are you guys probably getting tired of listening to me talk. But the bottom line is, uh, these guys understand blowback. Nothing happens in politics. Eh. <laughs> Excuse me. Nothing happens in politics except that it was planned that way. Nothing. And uh, Donald Trump and his crew, his little crazy fucking insane clown posse that uh, has taken over the White House, uh, knows what it's doing. They're not stupid. And uh, what you're seeing is uh, that insane clown posse fight with the Satanist pedophiles. And uh, the Satanist pedophiles are losing because their Achilles heel is the fact that none of us are going to fucking put up with Satanist pedophiles. In fact, I think they're also playing that card because they're wanting us to get a little uppity and impatient and start making some noise um, because they can use that as leverage also. Because I guarantee you, uh, you want the rule of law in this country. You, you want the rule of law to prevail. Right? That thin blue line and that thin green line, you don't want a civil war and utter chaos. You, you, you don't want that. Um, so what we need to have happen is for the government to do its fucking job and protect us from these pedophiles, uh, these police forces and marshals and sheriffs and uh, all the way up and down the lines, also you people in the military. 
right? What could fucking be worse? Who, I mean, the most vulnerable of our population, the children. I mean, if you didn't swear an oath to protect that, I mean, the innocence in the country, you're just going to look the other way now that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt, all you have to do is read some fucking email. It's all over the place. You have to now avoid it. You can call it, I mean, you can be in denial and try and call it 10 half conspiracy there, but I mean, it has spread. There is, I mean, email after email. Uh, there are pedophile rings getting busted all over the world. England and Australia, the Pope, for fuck's sake, the Pope's brother, the Vatican, all over the place. You guys denying the fact that the Catholic Church has a problem with pedophilia? Well, guess what? So does your government at the state, local, and federal levels. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Ridiculous what's going on. And we need to put an end to it. So, uh, you'll see, I believe, uh, that these guys are crazy like foxes. And like I said, understand the concept of blowback. And this is also the concept of blowback. The concept that they keep stalling and not serving the warrants and indictments and uh, the pedophiles continue to tweet and uh, run around on TV and be, uh, you know, protected by uh, the government and see more and more of us, or not the government, excuse me, the media, the news media, uh, all the mainstream media uh, seems to cover for these people left and right, calling it crazy conspiracy theory. Uh, that there's uh, child trafficking going on at the highest levels in our government. And that is a huge, it's a huge industry. Huge. It's a big, big industry. Well, the more we get pissed off, the better uh, it is for those people wanting to put the pedophiles down. And again, would you like this to happen now or a little bit closer to uh, election season, the primaries coming up. Hmm? I think the primaries, right? When these guys are uh, dropping indictment after indictment after indictment, as uh, Cliff High and now a couple of other people have uh, forecast, they don't come back from this. The Democrats do not come back from this. People are waking up. I see black people all over the place figuring out, wait a minute, all they ever did was got our vote. Uh, Trump's actually uh, making jobs. See, and like I said, what what's that? What's that? Yay, you get to work. Yay, you get to have them tax you and extract wealth from you. Yay. Right? Slavery light. The other guys were slavery, evil, heavy slavery, and uh, where they were going to do the most insane things. Um, I mean, they were looking at uh, <laughs> mandatory vaccinations for adults. Uh, they were looking at, I mean, they were just going to make money off of you in every sh way, shape, and form they could possibly figure out. More war, uh, more drug war, Monsanto. I mean, they, they were just going to get crazy. Uh, so what we're going to get from Faction B of the Kazarian Mafia is slavery light. They're not going to tell you your history. They're not going to tell you about advancement. They're not going to tell you anything about uh, ascension. They're not going to tell you, uh, they're going to give you bullshit disclosure when it comes to physics and mathematics, so you're still going to think, well, we can't really have free energy. Uh, we'll just keep pumping it out of the ground and burning coal and building fucking ridiculous devices like windmills and, and uh, solar farms when we could be, oh, God. Anyway, uh, I've gone on long enough, but the idea is uh, consciousness is rising, and I do believe uh, that uh, you will see that w once Faction B does its job, uh, there will be yet more uh, to the story, right? Once uh, the Kazarian Mafia gets done with its little uh, civil war that they're having right now, um, right in front of your eyes. Uh, the, I mean, the events of this year that, that come up are going to be talked about for centuries. I mean, it's, inc I mean, it's incredible what's coming. Um, the, I mean, the people that are going to be arrested, and the, I mean, really military tribunals inside the United States, Oh, and side note, um, this morning, I slept through it, I didn't even worry about it, uh, there was a false alarm that apparently scared the shit out of almost everybody in the state of Hawaii that was awake, because it said, this is not a drill, on the text. So people literally were cowering, waiting for the missile to hit. Uh, because What are you going to do? Where are you going to go? Um, I've, I saw some that was just heart-wrenching, where it's like, you know, mothers wanted to be with their daughters, daughters wanted to be with their mothers, children wanted to be with their, you know, kids. I mean, I mean just because, what are you going to do? Where's the missile going to hit? Is it Was it aimed at Oahu? They didn't know, right? All it said was, there's an incoming ballistic missile, and it's, uh, this is not a drill. 
turned out, of course, it was a false alarm. But uh, my thing with that is, and I'll close, is that uh, nuclear war, you're not, you're not preparing for that. There's no place to go. There's nowhere to run. There's nowhere to hide. If a 300 kiloton uh, nuclear missile uh, drops one, just one of them, on uh, Oahu, it's pretty much game over. It's just a matter of how long it takes you to die. Um, if they did three or four of them, and see, like all of our Trident submarines, they carry, uh, I believe it's 475 kiloton payloads, and I think by treaty it's eight now. They used to be able to carry 12. They can only carry eight. Eight. How many kilotons that is? Eight nuclear warheads on one sub. And if you don't think those subs are floating around uh, near uh, Russian subs and Chinese subs, they're playing chess on a consistent basis. Um, it's ridiculous because all that will happen is we cease to exist. And the all these shit that I see on the internet and so forth about uh, survivability and how, you know, the the they don't show you uh, I mean, apparently what they're thinking or what uh, people are thinking is that the nuclear missile is going to like hit a sidewalk, roll around, and then go off. That's not how it works. How it works is it goes off, you know, five to 10,000 feet above the target. It's a fucking nuclear bomb. And uh, everything in a very, very large blast radius is obliterated. Um, and I, I mean, there's a couple of maps that I saw on the internet. It's just like fucking liars, just liars. Because what they want you to think is that you could possibly survive a nuclear war. Ain't a, ain't, ain't, a, ain't, a, <laughs> ain't no survivors in that one, guys. Uh, if you understood how horrifying it was seeing that in the state of Hawaii, they got a little taste of that today, right? Because for about 45 minutes before they finally figured out that this was, you know, there was no anything anywhere that it was just a misfire apparently one guy pressed the wrong button and sent uh text to everyone in the state of hawaii and now they know that that system works um but for 45 minutes people on the in the state of hawaii were thinking oh it's finally happened a nuclear missile is going to hit and i i would like to know because i like i said i stepped right through i had no problem with it i was meditating at the time um did not scare me. Oh, and that's the other thing. <sighs> Delicious lucre. Oh, they were eating that while you guys were afraid and scared and, and wondering if it was gonna, where it was going to hit and how it was going to hit and who was going to die and what relatives and all this other stuff and all the crazy things that go through your mind while, uh, you know, and a lot of people are still, I mean, like, seriously shaken because for 45 minutes they thought that there was a ballistic missile going to hit somewhere around here. I, would, I don't prep for that kind of stuff. I prep for, I'll prep for dock strikes, I'll prep for hurricanes, I'll prep for, you know, natural disasters and so forth, but uh, ain't no prepping for a nuclear war. Uh, if you survive the first strike, you won't want to be around, and it'll just be a very short, miserable existence uh, until such time as you're dead, too. Uh, anyway, uh, maybe you guys quit voting for warmongers and perhaps uh, go to a peace protest. We're not anti-war, we're pro-peace. Anything you're against, you strengthen. So, uh, anti-war, no. Pro-peace, yes. Educate self, educate others. These are simple, fundamental laws. And I'll talk to you later. E pluribus unum.